Okay, the recording is in progress. Now let me go out to Facebook. Here we go. And uh, yeah, preparing the live stream. There we are. And now we're on live on out, out there. I think yeah, streaming live on Facebook. Hi everybody. How are you? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I can't see you. Now I can see you. No, now I can't see anything. No. Uh, oh, gee, we have a lot of people here today. I didn't think we'd have this many. I thought most of you'd be outdoors trying to see what was going on with uh, the uh, um, with the eclipse, the total eclipse, I might add, of the sun. But let's admit everybody, boy, a ton of people. Boy, here we go. Let's see. Charlie Wallace and Marjorie and Scott Boddicker and John Ewing and Francine Witt and uh, Deutsch and Len LaFrisco. And of course, as always, wait a minute until he... Wait a minute. A few more cameras going here. Okay, hopefully you've been watching. What? Let me see here. My uh, camera won't come on. Your camera won't come on? No. Oh, well, turn your... Uh, get rid of... Turn your computer. Uh, turn it off. Turn off. And then you sign back in. You might be okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Edward Berger, are you there? We don't see Edward Berger. Huh. Okay. Edward's probably going to sign in again, too. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? Good afternoon. Good. How are you? Uh, I'm uh, fine. Thank you. I guess. I imagine. Um uh i uh, uh oh here we go we'll try edward Berger here and see if he shows up now let's see because before he couldn't get his camera going now he's connecting to audio so that means he but there's no camera can you hear us edward he's muted hey can you hear us edward <laughs> ask to unmute Asked to unmute. Okay, I've asked him to unmute. Come on, we can't do this show without Edward Berger for crying out loud. Who's going to sign That's up? right. <laughs> and we'll be here all day. <laughs> yeah, let me see here. Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace has entered the room. Let's ah, see. There I am. And uh, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> what was happening with you, Edward? But I don't know. Terrible. Charlie was having trouble with his video. Yeah. But now there he is. How are you, Charlie? I think he was eclipsed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, where you were, you got a, almost a total eclipse, didn't you? We got a total eclipse. We had three and a half minutes of totality here in Austin. We, really, we and, like how, how, and would you care to uh, anybody else feel totality at all wherever you were? You, where you were, yes, in Ohio, of course. Yeah, we had like five, six minutes of it. A five, well, not five, six minutes. Only about three and a half minutes. <laughs> it was. It was an hour. It was an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we got yeah, just to ask his ask his wife. It's, it's, we got three hours. I haven't been moved like that since high school. You know, we got three hours, but that was last <laughs> night. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, it was cloudy here, so the sun was darting in and out of the clouds during the yeah, whole but, thing. You know, if you if you use your glasses and you look up at what should be the sun, you would see the eclipse. Yep. yep. You know, so um, boy, I'm jealous of you guys. Texas, so it it really was over five minutes. We timed it from the time that it that it covered. Well, is that possible, to, uh, to, uh, uh, Charlie? It's only three and a half minutes, right? Well, the maximum was four hours and thirty-eight minutes. I think was the longest. No, four. you mean the whole, the whole, the whole four, four minutes, four minutes and thirty-eight four minutes. seconds. Yeah. yeah, four minutes and thirty-eight seconds was the maximum. Scott Boddicker, you yes. had your hand up. You had your hand up. Oh no, I'm just saying. Yeah, we had we had total eclipse, and it was it's about four and a half minutes, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. They had more time than we had in Austin. Yeah. And now yeah. if we're lucky, Austin we can go. Good edge. I think everybody's like bragging. This is how big your penis is. I had <laughs> <laughs> I got video. I'm just glad it's over so I don't have to listen to that stupid Bonnie Tyler song anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to play it all night tonight. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and here, here comes uh, Vernon Nunn. I, I Isn't don't... it amazing how cool it got when the sun went in? I'll bet that yeah, was crazy. Yeah, it was a drop noticeably, yeah. Yeah. Well, it don't make me feel jealous because we got 90% totality here. And it was, I had to say to Marjorie, it is darker out there. It was more like it was overcast. Yeah. The last, the last know. total eclipse I saw was at a junkyard. A guy wrecked his Mitsubishi. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in new york so you did you look up at it at all well i went up to my roof but i couldn't see out of the glasses that i had they were like blacked out so i came back downstairs and i was waiting for it to get dark and it never did no, so but it, got, it, it, got, like, it got kind of overcast yeah yeah and it did feel a little weirder usually than overcast yeah you know uh but uh i had the had my glasses here and of course, you can't see anything through them. You're not supposed to, unless you look up at the sun, in which case yeah. you see the the sun. Marjorie's going to start you. wearing those every day, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Marjorie hasn't been well lately. She'd been dizzy, going through dizziness. And uh -huh. uh, I had to say hello to uh, uh, Mr. Ewing as well, John Ewing, who's with us. I forgot. I think I didn't recognize you. And there's Vernon Nunn. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, uh -oh. it, you know, Marjorie, Marjorie's been having a certain dizziness, and every time she'd have to look up, she'd come down, she'd be stumbling, you know. So, mm. but did you enjoy it, Marjorie? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, Alex, so, Alex? how about you, Vernon? You didn't get anything right down there. We got like 98%. 98? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Everybody's bragging. It's like, yeah. I got 98%. I got 15%. You know, we, we got 90%, I think it was here. We had 99.36. What happened? How dark did it get where you were, Vernon? Uh, during the peak, it, it was like uh, evening time, like the sun had already gone down, you know, before the sun, before the light completely goes away, but the sun has crested the, 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 the horizon. Yeah. It got that dark. Yeah. Well, supposedly there are a couple of things that are really nice about it. It, it, it. When it goes to a full total eclipse, you get these beads on the side of it called Bailey's yeah. beads. It's a friend of mine. A friend of mine had had this taken in Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah but cool. ba ba Bailey's beads, which I believe are just solar flares, right, peeking out. No, no, no. That's actually the sun peeking between the mountain peaks on the moon. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Mountains peaks like this, and the sun comes right between them, just before, just before and just after totality. So, yeah, you do see the prominences too, because there were some orange and red spots around the moon that, that we saw here. That those turn out to be gas, plasma gases being spewed off by the sun's surface. Well, I showed Marjorie a video I had of, that I took in the Mediterranean of a lunar eclipse. That's where the Earth comes in front of the moon. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was a total eclipse down there. But I guess you're not all impressed with lunar as much as you are soul. Well, the whole half of the country, the whole half of the world that's in darkness sees a lunar eclipse. Only a tiny percentage of the part of the Earth that's in sunlight sees a solar eclipse. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Alex? Hmm. Would you indulge me if I read my eclipse poem? You have an eclipse poem? Yeah, it was published it in this journal. I think oh, it would be wow. appropriate, as yeah. long as it doesn't go on forever. No, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, it's this long. Oh. Uh, slide of moon, slowly across the sun's yellow flower face, and we can't help but gather ourselves wisps of ghostly dandelion spores we are clustered, our necks tilting away from the flat earth of our every day. We cover our eyes with special glasses, dare to peek through pinhole viewers, and we brief, briefly remember we are more than bits. We are little more than bits of on a sa galaxy sash. We are fly away and passing, flipped off the moment we die. But here today, for this one single held breath with songbirds going silent, and we huddled together back into that single organism we were meant to be, brought together in the day dark as the moon closes off the sun like some giant held up thumb, the eclipse 
and us going total and we aren't scared, not even for a second. And then the whole thing passes back to normal, the moon going back to its part of the sky and we scatter back apart like some, un like some unseen wish breath was blowing on us. We go back to our separate lives, the fear of death eclipsed again, like always. We forget the fact that one day, billions of eons from now, the sun will be hidden again, fade like a dying flower, blacked out forever and gone. Thank you. That's our, this is the only the only place you will <laughs> come anywhere and get an eclipse. I'm here at eclipse poem. Poem. Okay. You, may, <laughs> you may get Bonnie Tyler up your ass. Thank, thank you for thank you for indulging me on that. No, I, no, it's know. fine. It was, yeah. it was entirely appropriate. Yeah, and I figure like oh, you know, we've mentioned that I'm a writer, so I just wanted to get right, you know, share something that I've written that felt appropriate. Yeah, the only thing, thing I ever wrote was uh, uh, there was mm -hmm. a woman in the Azores who's well, we won't get into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get it i get where you're going <laughs> wasn't she married to that dude from nantucket <laughs> yes yes, yes. yes. <laughs> he did a thing on family guy where they're driving in into nantucket and there's this the sign of the you know the town nantucket and below it it says where the man is from <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> Actually, I love I love limericks, and I love limericks because, really, if you think about it, can anybody here name a or recite a clean limerick? No, <laughs> I don't think it exists. <laughs> it it is meant to be a body form of poetry, right? Right by yeah. definition. Yeah, yeah. Although I did write a uh, a clean limerick once, uh, but I uh, wrote it for a friend and. Um, I can't remember it now, but it was clean because everybody said you never can have a dirty limerick. So I, I wrote a clean limerick. Or a serious one. I don't think you can write a serious limerick. No, no, no. Oh. Just because. Because the pattern, you know, the. Yeah, the pattern. Pattern. Right. So sing song. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Type of poetry. Um, there once was a woman named Marjorie who's, I, I don't know what you, where you would go from there. Who married an asshole named Alex. I don't know. I have nothing. I have nothing. But, uh, gee, we have a lot of people here, and they all got out there and looked as well. How many were in the path now? We have uh, one, two, three. Yeah. Well, how about you, Charlene? No. No. Of course, you're out in California. Yeah. Yeah. You just completely avoided California. <laughs> I think we got 35%. 35%? Oh, really? Oh, really? So you did get something. Mm -hmm. I didn't go outside to look. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, California just didn't get it. But it, is California due for one in a couple of years or something? I don't think so. Supposedly, uh, one like this one is not coming <laughs> back till 19 or 2044, I think. Yeah. It. And that's yeah. the northern US. Can I share my clean limerick? Oh, okay. A radio DJ named Alex, you see, had a voice that was smooth as can be, but his jokes fell quite flat, landing with a soft splat, and the silence grew thicker than pea soup by G. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get AI to write that for you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. And, well, anyway, so uh, here we are. I, I I'm glad we're kind of over that, yeah. <laughs> because and I'm glad it came in a, at a good time because we were just getting really tired of everybody with their oh we had an earthquake in New York <laughs> talk. Yeah, yeah. That was... And I had to like look. I looked at Marjorie and I went, you know, kind of like Crocodile Dundee. That's not a knife. This is a <laughs> knife. <laughs> you know, that's right. not an earthquake. What yeah. I went through was an earthquake. Uh, Loma Prieta was a good one. <laughs> you remember Loma Prieta, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was a major it was a major quake in a major area. We're I'm 70 miles away from there and I could hardly stand up. I mean, it was crazy. Oh wow. yeah. Yeah. Where I can't remember where the Loma Prieta was. Uh it was down in the back. 
Val. Yeah, the south. Yeah, below like Santa Clara and down that way. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Um, but I mean, it was a. Uh, it was uh, this one. One the other day was a four point eight. Ooh, what a shake. Yeah. But then it we had like the Prieta, and that was a six point nine. From and it's it's exponential. It's logarithmic. So each oh, yeah. tenth of a point. Oh yeah. Is ten times more. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Mm. It's like Alex, every tenth of a point, it doubles or something, or at least, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's really? crazy. So you get up around a six point nine, you're in serious territory. Yeah, that's when buildings start falling. What? Yeah, well, yeah. they did. We have buildings start falling. Yeah, or bridges. Yeah. Well, you know, what it all depends on is whether how they build the buildings too. Now in San Francisco, you can have a good shake. And all those buildings are earthquake quake proof, you know. Alex, didn't you live in the marina when that happened? Didn't the, yeah. mar the yeah. marina caved in basically? Yeah, that was basically, bad. well, the, the, the to begin with, the marina is built on landfill, right? Well, really, what happens when you have an uh, earthquake is something they call liquefaction, yeah, in which the earth kind of becomes liquid. And the water starts seeping through and everything like that. So uh, it was not on solid ground. Um, it, those buildings now, though, won't go because they went back after the earthquake and created rolling foundations. Mm -hmm. So if there's an earthquake, the only thing that makes a building fall down is it's too rigid. Yeah. And it shapes mm -hmm. and then it falls. But if you can get it so it rolls back and forth with the earthquake, then it's not going to collapse or fall. Uh, my building was fine. I had a crack in my wall. I left it there because I wanted it, the memory of the Loma Prieta quake. Uh, but it was a, it was a, you know, we, I lost, I think I lost a, uh, um, I lost a bookcase collapse, mm. you know, and everything wound up on the floor. I mean, that's where everything wound up, but that, that was it. But that was enough. You know, didn't have any electricity for a week. You know, wow. and um, um, I'm, it, 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 there's there's something to be said. I mentioned this the other night on the show. Um, there's something after an earthquake. Uh, I suggest everybody have sex <laughs> because there's nothing better than what I call, well, I'll use the term, a rubble fuck. Uh, <laughs> It, it uh, there's something about it, and I asked I asked a um, psychologist once or somebody I can't remember who I asked about it. I I mentioned this. I said, all of a sudden we're having sex like rabbits, you know, and, and this was with a girlfriend I had broken up with, you know, who happened to stay with me that night. And, Is a rubble. Huh? I've never heard that term before, but okay. The smoke is in the <laughs> air. smoke is in the air. Sirens are outside. Lights are flashing, and you have this incredible desire to have sex. Too bad you didn't know me back then, Marjorie. Would I? Be <laughs> you know? Too bad. Too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you uh, almost uh, died. I, so. I was told that that there's a, something in us in something like that that makes us want to procreate in order to maintain the species <laughs> in other yes. words keep the species going it's just it, there's something about it and he said yeah I've, he said i've i've heard that time and time again during tragedies that people suddenly found themselves having sex for no particular reason you know That's a good reason so just hope an earthquake comes to your neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> it did what? Yeah, it did it last did. week. Well, I I'm a typical Californian. I slept through it. You know, we right out in California, we sleep through earthquakes. Oh That's yeah, right. yeah. Uh, and uh, I I was sleeping. I woke up and the door was shaking, mm -hmm. and I thought it was wind. That's what I thought too. You did too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it kind of was like, and then. It went away, and I went back to sleep. And then when I woke up, Marjorie said, we had an earthquake. And I went, so that's what that was, huh? She says, yeah, it was a it was a 4-8. I went, wake me up when it's a 5. Okay. <laughs> it isn't worth getting up for anything please, under a 5. You still have time. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, I'll tell you something. How many here have been in earthquakes? I guess, uh, uh, Charlie, you've been in an earthquake. Where were you in uh, an earthquake? I was in an earthquake in California. I think it was 1982. Mm -hmm. I was out there for Xerox training. And we had like a 5.5. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> thought you were going to die? Yeah, because it just kept shaking. I didn't. It wouldn't stop. It lasted for over a minute. It, it, well, that's the part that's scary because what yeah. happens is it starts shaking and it starts shaking more and more and more and more and you're wondering what the peak is going to be and then it starts not going down and you go, boy, okay, that's that's better. But um, uh, um, how long have you, you you've lived all your life out in California, right, John? Yeah, I was going to say in the '50s in the Richmond district in the city, we were trained to get under desk to protect ourselves as kids from yeah. upcoming earthquakes. But I always found it kind of unbelievable to stand under a doorway or anything. If it's really rocking, I don't know if it really helped. But they say stand under a doorway, but I think in one case, a guy actually died under a doorway because it collapsed. That's That was kind of my supposition a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, the best well, thing the brain is supposed to be sturdier, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where you're supposed to go. You probably yeah. just bend over and kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah. You know, that's that's the assumed position. Um, hello, Mandy. How are you? Good, how are you? Were you out looking at the eclipse? I did. Uh, <laughs> my yeah. friend. Right. And my you friend. Did, how many I'm what percentage did you have down there? I don't even know. I mean, it was just, you know, we, there was like a little, a little sliver. A little sliver. How about you, Vernon? A little sliver? 98%. Oh, yeah, 98%. Yeah, he had it. yeah. Did you go outside at all, of uh, 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 Edward Berger? I didn't have glass. I looked up, but I didn't have the glasses. You looked so up. I get, you did a Trump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, about the well, where was I on the earthquake? My yeah. daughter has the worst FOMO because she said neither time did she feel it. <laughs> she <laughs> <went back. laughs> Your daughter. She said, didn't I guess I'm it. just. I guess I'm just oblivious. I was like, no, you're just busy. No. That was my son was working on a. Marjorie, list. you were awake and you've never been in an earthquake before. I, I I assume. No, I was in the office when it happened. So what happened? Did it scare you? Everything just started shaking. Because nothing wound up like they say there was damage. What? No, so it didn't New scare Jersey, me. A base fell off a table. Yeah. It didn't scare me because they're doing work on our roof, and that's what I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> we're on the top floor. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so, I mean, I, but I, you know, I, uh, what was I going to say about, uh, oh God, there was something about earthquakes I was going to say, and then I forgot. Well, that's what a age will do to you. You know, especially when you're doing a talk show, you go, what was I talking about? <laughs> kind of like when you used to get stoned and all of a sudden you couldn't remember what you were talking about. And so you'd have to kind of go back to the beginning of the conversation and maybe back even further. You have to, sometimes I'd have to go back to when I was born and then retrace my step. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, today I oh today I had a, a wonderful adventure. Um, I had to go down and get a piece of paper notarized. Yes. Well, I had to do it last week, but then they mailed it and it never got to where it was supposed to get. So now I had to go this morning and do it so I could like, do you know you can, you can get things notarized online now? No. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What you do is you, you go online and you go to this, one of these companies that does it and uh, you um, give them a bunch of information, you know, and a, a, a you, uh, you uh, send them a PDF of the uh, document you want notarized, okay? Um, and then they call you by video conference to make sure you're the person on your driver's license, which you also send them a copy of. And you just do that, and it's like 25 bucks, so it's more expensive than you know going down to the corner to UPS. 
But how do you get the wet signature on there? Do they mail it back to you? I think I think what you do is you sign it, and then you PDF it to them, and then they notarize it, and it's legal, <laughs> completely legal. Right. You know. On the other hand, I went to UPS last week, got it notarized. They said, uh, I said, where's the closest post office? Oh, well, we can just mail it from here. And they threw it in the slot that said mail, and it never got to them. Wow. So now I go down to the same UPS store, because it's the closest one by, say, I want to notarize them. Our notary guy isn't going to be in until 1 o'clock, and it's like 10 in the morning. Jeez. I said, so where's the closest uh, other place that I can get notarized? I said, there's a UPS store up on Lexington, which is many blocks away. So yeah. then I have to find a cab and take it up to Lexington. And then I go to this place to get it done. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was just it was just hell this morning trying to get this thing done. So that was my adventure this morning. I very seldom go out on the street until three in the afternoon, you know, yeah. <laughs> here I am darting all over town trying to get this thing done. And then I couldn't find a bus, a car coming back. So I had to take a bus and I'd forgotten how to take a bus. <laughs> you know. How do you forget to take a bus? Well, here's how you forget yeah. to take a bus. You have your card, right? Yeah. You know? And I don't know which way to put the card in that thing. <laughs> I never figure it out. Yeah. You know. It doesn't have arrows on it. Does it have it arrows? Yeah the, the, yeah, the card has arrows yeah. on it. Arrows on it? Yeah. It doesn't have arrows. It was... no? But there's a there's a, a side that's clipped off, you know, that's... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's arrows on the um, on it. figure it out. Hey, I'm an old man. Come on. <laughs> Next time go to the bank. They always but the one thing I learned today, this is a little lesson for all of you. Everybody, go out and buy a cane. Just go out and buy a cane. <laughs> yeah. Because I've been using a cane lately because I'm afraid of falling. Not because I need it for stability, but I just want to have it there in case I start falling and maybe I have something to grab onto. Um since Every other time that I've fallen, I've grab, been grabbed onto Marjorie, and that didn't help at all. Okay. Um, so uh, I have this cane, and I'm just yeah, I just use it to you know make sure that I'm if I feel unsteady that I just put it down and so on and so forth. But I, it's not because I can't walk. Well, I found out that like I'd be coming out of a door, I'd open a door, and some people would want to come in, and they go, "Oh no, you go first. <laughs> Plus, it was no you go first and i'm thinking this ain't a bad deal with the cane you know and it's just because i had a cane so you know marjorie use your cane all the time when you go out now you might be able to get free stuff i don't know <laughs> anybody watch the last uh curb your enthusiasm yeah yeah I predicted it, didn't I? You did. In fact, I predicted it on the show last week. The last episode would have him wind up in jail. And it would be the same ending as Seinfeld. And it was exactly the same ending as Seinfeld when he's talking about the thing in his pants. Well, they were talking about the where the button is on a shirt as they're sitting there in their jail cell. And then the camera backs up and they did the same move, the camera backing up. But then they changed it at the end. And Seinfeld said, you know, we really should have done it this way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. That was funny. But I, I predicted it. I knew that's where he was going to go with that thing. And he did the same thing he did with the Seinfeld thing. He brought everybody back. Right. You know, of any significance in the series. Um, and uh, boy, Richard Lewis looked terrible or what? Yeah. yeah. That's sad, you know. Sad. He knew Larry David. They were in high school together. No way. That's how far back they went. And they were the best of friends forever, you know. So, anyway. Well, that's all I got. What do you guys got? <laughs> I had a question. I had a question for you regarding the other nights in the week. I was wondering if it's helpful because, you know, I'm prehistoric with computer, but would it be advantageous to share some of these shows on my Facebook page to incorporate more people to get on those nights? 
Sure. Sure. Okay. You know, steal all my material. I don't care. <laughs> oh no, I'm not stealing anything. Well, no, you know, people people want to you know, come to me and want to use this and want to use that. And they're asking for permission. And I go, you don't need permission. You no, know. I just thought to recruit more pe people if it you yeah, know, because no, I, I, I leave it open so people can do that. Okay. He's not yeah. an influencer. Huh? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I was just suggesting that for more yeah. people because you seem bummed out about the lack of people. Yeah, I think you, yeah. Francine brought something up that I think that I, I need to do. Marjorie, I think I know how we can make a lot of money. Okay. It's all on you, kid. Because I watch these people on YouTube. You know, there's this woman who's got a golden retriever that she anthropomorphizes. You know, she puts captions of what the dog is saying. <laughs> now I can make as much fun as I want to out of this. How many views do you think she gets? A lot. Try no. forty-four million. Yeah. No, I wasn't thinking that, but it, yeah. And you get four thousand dollars a million from YouTube. So how much money does she make on one video that got forty-four million views? Well. I always see on those reels things on Instagram, you know, there's always like a little French bulldog and they, and they have somebody talking to it. Like the, there's a guy and he's talking to his French bulldog and he gives the French bulldog something to say. Mm -hmm. And people love that. And so it's, I guess it's the same kind of thing. People love dogs and talking dogs and, yeah. you know, well, it's pretty, natural. I see all this going on. It's time for me to become an influencer. You need to talk to be an influencer <laughs> for, and I'm figuring maybe Metamucil. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought, you know. Girito. Uh, what, <laughs> what what's that fiber stuff you take all the time, Marjorie? We could I we could uh, use that in a video. Yeah, plug it, and you know maybe the company will pay us money for pushing it. You know. So anyway. But no, she was this. I wish this. Uh, what is it? I, it's a golden retriever. It's a golden I, retriever. Yeah, and and the dog is very is funny and so on. But she, you know, the dog moves into a new house and she gets like thirty five million views. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Own, yeah. You know, and I'm I'm sitting here. See maybe it. you know, maybe three hundred people will watch this, and I'm going, what am I doing wrong? You know. So Marjorie, Absolutely. you're a golden retriever, okay? It's all yours, Alex. <laughs> I'll walk it. You know. The one that gets me is these people that get millions and millions of views of them just opening up boxes that they bought. Oh, those, right. yeah, those are the uh, unboxing videos. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Putting on makeup. Everything. Mm -hmm. everything is, anything you can think of, there's a YouTube video of it. Mm -hmm. And they make a lot of money. I mean, yeah. you, you, what is it for? Uh, what did I say? 44 million. Yeah. And $4,000 $4, a million. So well, 10 million would have gotten them $40,000. 40, <laughs> 100, she made about $160,000 oh, no. goddamn dog Let me see. for one, one video. video. She has a whole yeah. bunch of them. Yeah. And she hasn't done any in the last three years because her husband and herself probably took all that money and went on a really nice vacation. <laughs> Put the dog in a kennel and left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about that violin player that you talked about, Alex? Oh, oh, her. Oh, oh she's her. good. The Ukrainian. Oh, she's very good. She's incredible. Yeah. But yeah. she's... She's worth, I read on a line, she's worth $4 million, $5 million, worth that much from all her violin things. Yep. You know, I mean, and yes, yeah, she, she does play well, and she is kind of, she's cute. She dances. You know? Do you know who I'm talking about, Francine? Have you seen her? Oh, uh -huh. I can't remember what her name is now, but it's, you know. Katrina Prosenko. Huh? Katrina Protsenko. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Right. Very good. You watch her then. I do. Uh -huh. Yeah. My right, she's pretty good. 
Have you ever watched those? Dances while he's playing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a sucker for violins because my father played a violin. Like if I'm walking down the street and there's somebody or in the subway and somebody's playing a violin, I'll throw money in his in his at him because just because my father, you know. So when I see I and then I went out with a violinist for a while. And uh, but my father, through, when I watched this girl, I'm very uh, did, uh, fond did of, of, of people who play violins. OK, you know, Alex, did, did you fiddle her? What? <laughs> Did you fiddle her? Yeah, well, oddly enough, my father used to call his violin a fiddle. You would think he would call it a violin, but he called yeah, I, where's my fiddle? I need to I need to go to work, you know. Do you still have somebody in your building that repairs violins? Yes, we have an oh, on the other side of this wall one, here is a family, and they have their business there, and they sell rare violins huh. and i went up to see him one day and he took me into this room that he has a lock on safe in a safe and then he took me in and then there's a safe and he opens up the safe and he pulls out two cases one with two violins in it one with one violin in it and he said here you go uh this is what did he say? I think ten million dollars worth of Stradivariuses. Holy moly! Wow! And I he opened them up, and I put one under my chin, and all I could think of again was my father. I wish he were alive, so I could have called him and said, "Get Dad, guess what I had under my chin? I had an eight thousand eight million dollar Stradivarius." Um, but well, he, what did he tell us recently about the Italian one that he had? It was I mean, Bernini or something. Yeah, from the dictator. Oh, what? oh yeah, Mussolini's violin. He's really? trying. He has over. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And I said, <laughs> Mussolini played the violin. He said yes. He was a he was a violinist. He loved playing the violin, and uh, we have his violin here. The only thing that distinguishes it is it's not the greatest violin ever made, but it was owned by Mussolini. You know. So, uh, yeah. So that's right right next door. If you ever want to come here, we'll do a hole in the wall and go steal them. You know? <laughs> um, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Though. Yeah. So how's everything down in Georgia after that big Larry David trial last night? <laughs> She's on the phone, Alex. Oh. Sorry, I'm, I'm working. Sorry. Oh. I... She's at okay. work, Alex. What? I can't tell. <laughs> did, did, Alex, did Jack Benny play a Stradivarius? Yes. I thought so. Yeah, my father said that he had always pissed him off when he worked with Benny, and Benny had a Stradivarius, and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Benny, Benny really didn't play well didn't play great but he didn't play terribly if he had to go Ooh. to a concert which he did occasionally uh, with an or a symphony orchestra he could kind of hold his own but he wasn't you know he could get the notes out but he wasn't a great violinist yeah uh, but he wasn't as bad as he made it sound his ability to make himself sound bad playing was genius <laughs> in and of itself mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, is she available now? I don't know. She's talking. She's working. I know she's working, but I don't know when she's talking to somebody or not. She's muted, and you can see her lips moving. So she's yeah. talking. Oh, okay. She has on headphones. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll sit here and wait, okay? <laughs> yeah, let's Fair watch her sure. work. Yeah. Peer pressure. <laughs> so, Boddicker, how is everything in Plano, Texas? Sunny. We were lucky it wasn't cloudy. It's very nice. It was, it was a very, very sunny day there. Yes. Well, it was in and out clouds, but it was it was definitely... How warm is it? You know? uh, I think they said it was 79 when the before the eclipse, and it dropped four degrees during it, but it's back up now to... Oh, wait. It's... 
I just looked at my watch here. It is the warmest I think we've been, Marjorie, so far. I mean, and here we are in in getting towards the middle of of April, and it's sixty five today. Mm -hmm. We haven't quite hit the average temperature, but sixty five. So. Tomorrow, 84, I think it's 84. supposed to. Yeah. Eighty four, where you are? Yeah, yeah. We've hit ninety already this year. Really. Mm. Yeah, we have not had a good it's, you wouldn't believe it was spring here it just started mm. looking like spring it, it barely went above 50 over here on Friday and Saturday and it's going to be 82 on Thursday so who knows yeah you but know? You're, where you're down the valley right no, San Francisco Livermore Livermore uh, yeah. oh okay All right. yeah. sorry y'all I'm that oh, right. Really, okay. You don't have to make it. Well, that was really rude. Really you know, really. <laughs> oh. How dare you work? I, I was saying, how's everything down in in uh, in Atlanta after the big Larry David trial? <laughs> the Larry David trial? Last night on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, I didn't watch it. Oh, well, watch it. It's all about, it, it, it all takes place in Atlanta, the whole episode. Oh gosh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, crazy. because uh, you know they were putting him on trial for having given a woman water in line waiting to vote. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I will definitely have to watch it. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's on HBO, isn't it? I don't have HBO. Mm. That's probably why I didn't watch it because I don't well, have HBO. Next time you're we'll get up, go there, you got to get things for go. free. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Although I'm sure your daughter can tell you. No? I doubt she watches it either. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, so, uh, but it's, uh, the weather's nice down there? Oh, yeah. We ended up having, like, perfect weather for the eclipse, you know. Yeah. Even though Today was a very cold. nice day. We had little, little clouds, but the thing is, if you can see the sun shining through the clouds, then you can mm -hmm. use the dark glasses to look at the eclipse. And it just, it, it, I'm like Charlie. I'm a, I'm a nerd about this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I just love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and mean, what it is, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, it's just science at its most basic, you know, and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, really neat. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it amazes me how they can tell, like how they know when it's going to happen. I know. Oh, they were they were at one place they were at. They started counting down till the total eclipse. They were going five, four, three, two, one. And yep. it, it, by the time they got to zero, the eclipse took place. They knew exactly the minute it was going to take place. Yeah. You know. It's crazy. Thank but, Isaac Newton for that. What? <laughs> Just knowing the next time it'll happen. How big what did you say? Uh, 2044. Yeah. You said something about three Newton. Wait, wait, what did you say, Charlie? To thank Isaac Newton because calculus is what allows astronomers to figure out down to practically the second mm. when the eclipses are going to happen. Wow. Wow. It's amazing. It's just, you know, so, uh, just the nature in itself just amazes me. And I've got this idea lately that nature is finally saying, fuck you, I'm giving up on the human race. Because, you know, what earthquakes in New York? Yeah. Yeah, right. I one and I saw them later on. Sorry. You know? I mean, come on. It's ridiculous. And all the fires out in California and then uh, everything else that's happening out in California. I mean, this is nature going, I'm sick of you guys, you know? We never had earthquakes in Texas until they started fracking. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Wow. Well, here too. Yeah, but anyway. So uh, uh, otherwise, um, no, not much news out there really. It's just kind of boring at this point. Uh, the thing I loved, and I don't want to get into politics here, but this is a funny story: is Donald Trump saying that when he was giving the State of the Union address, Joe Biden yeah. was on coke. Oh, <laughs> Please. What what did you say? He said uh -huh. that the Biden during the State of the Union address was high on coke. Oh, of course, he would say that. 
Of course he would say that. I mean, Trump had a button to get diabetes. Where did, where did that come from? It's called projection. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Complete. Yeah. When, when Trump accuses somebody of something, it's probably something he's doing. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Listen, I've seen people on Coke. I know people on Coke. I've been on Coke. Okay. <laughs> and I know what it's like to be on Coke. And believe me, if anybody in the entire universe doesn't look like he's on Coke, it's Joe <laughs> Biden. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, That's just nuts. What's he trying? Uh, it's, it's amazing. Just amazing. Boy, it's going to be an, a great, great election year. Um, but anybody do anything interesting in the last week that we can uh, talk about here? Boy, you are an interesting bunch of human beings. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. I'm doing on Saturday. Oh, okay. My my favorite person in the world, uh, whom I always have loved, Valerie Bertinelli, is coming to the Ferry Building in San Francisco, and I'm going to go do a meet and greet with her. That's awesome. Why is she going to the Ferry Building? She's she's got a cookbook coming out. She's got and a there's cookbook. a cook. There must be. I think there's a. I think there's a. Uh, I think there's a bookstore in there now. So yeah, did you so I'm going to get to go meet Valerie Bertinelli. So I'm very excited. Or did you see anything about how when she was on The View, she was dropping F bombs yeah. and S bombs, and they were having to yeah. bleep her out? <laughs> oh, man, man. When was this yeah. recently? Last week. I oh, did wow. not see her. No. She was. She looked like she was on. Call. <laughs> All the people who drop F bombs, you wouldn't think it would be Valerie Bertinelli. Yeah. I mean, she was, she was, they, the article was basically saying that she was just being so casual, like she was on The View, and it was almost like she just didn't even act like she was on television. She was she like she was drunk. She was like she was drunk. She was like, what's this? They had all this food. That really? she, uh, now you have to know I watch The View, how embarrassing. But, <laughs> yeah. but, um, she, they all, I'm going to have to all look that All the stuff up. that she had cooked, and she's going, did I make that? Yeah, oh, she was just was being like, really ditzy. Yeah, really wow. weird. She was weird. Could have been she was drunk. Yeah, uh, that's what it, she looked like. She was drunk, or she was high. Yeah, not to burst your bubble when. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. you're ruining my whole <laughs> life. Sorry. Are you sure? She, are you sure she wasn't high on coke? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's my, back. <laughs> my wife knows she's my hall pass, you know, so uh, I'm bringing my wife with me just to make sure that there's no impropriety, you know. And Lynn, just so you know, she snores and she's got really cold feet. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate that. You're welcome. By the and way, no, you can't, I can't share talk, photos. Talking about snoring. Are we supposed to have one from Star Marjorie has been complaining lately. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. See you next week, guys. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? Don't go. Don't go. Yeah, oh, shit. Go. Oh, oh, no, no, Alex. Oh, Marjorie. No, Marjorie. Oh, no, Marjorie, come back. <laughs> Here goes your dinner. I missed it. Why'd she leave? Oh, I mean, Alex. Did she, last night she was snoring a lot. <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy, bro, bro. I'm in trouble now. Oh, boy. <laughs> Thanks. Huh? Marjorie, call back. <laughs> oh boy. You know, you know it's terrible when somebody hangs up on you and they're in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kids these days will never have the pleasure of going, oh, screw you and yeah, slam it. I was just gonna say that. I was just gonna oh. say that. That's so much satisfaction going like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Exactly. Well, to, to uh, what is it? Is it? Uh, oh, yeah, it's Wednesday. We're going to have our our uh, uh, anniversary wedding anniversary. Uh, oh, finally, you know. at the right place this time. Well, yeah. we went to one on the right day, <laughs> the wrong place. She thought it was a restaurant that we liked, and it turned out it was a restaurant I didn't like. <laughs> You know, it's not a bad restaurant. It's just small and nothing in, in particular. Where the other place is festive and has good food and, you know, you feel like you're celebrating something. They even come out and if you say it's somebody's birthday, they put like a flare 
in the cake that they gave her. <laughs> yeah. oh, nice. So, uh, so, so she may, she's taking me out. I took her out for our wedding dinner. So now she's taking us out on this one and she's calling this the wedding dinner. She yeah, refuses I, I, to I, call it anything else. Our wedding anniversary dinner. So after her just hanging up on you, I don't know if you're going to dinner or not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to take some other wife. Just make sure when they bring your food that you're at the table and she can't do something to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't don't go to the don't go to the restroom. Oh boy. Well, yeah. I wonder why she got mad at me at saying she snored. That's embarrassing for her, you know. Yes. I mean, how's it embarrassing? Who doesn't snore? How many people there snore? I do. I know I do. We all do. Yeah. We all do. Yeah. You don't snore, uh um Andrew? I think they have a different word for it. I think snoring is less than what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Less than what I you once do. I once woke up to my phone ringing and a guy in France told me to cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> he was so pissed he told me in English. <laughs> well, no, I mean I I snore, you know. Uh, I try not. When I lost all my weight, though, I I didn't snore as much because it has to do with weight in a lot of cases. If you're a little a little heavy. But it did with me. I lost 150 pounds. Wow. Like two years ago, I lost 150 pounds. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, amazing. Good for you. You, I mean, you same, stopped snoring, I mean, did you say? Mm -hmm. See? Okay. So, but, uh, you know, I'd lose weight now, but my I don't want to lose weight because then my doctor will think there's something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the one of the you know I have this this form of leukemia, and one of the side effects is that you uh, you may lose weight. Uh, and if I and I'd like to lose some weight, but the amount I want to lose, they would think I was getting sick. <laughs> All right, so I, now I keep it on just to keep my doctors happy. <laughs> so, strange. Um. Charlie, the shirt today is the shirt. Oh, it's just eclipse. a commemorative day. Right? Yeah. I wonder how many Eclipse shirts they sold in this country in the last oh, week. Yeah. I don't know. They sold a lot of glasses. I do know that. Well, Mar yeah. Marjorie got these from Amazon, and then it turns out that some of the ones that Amazon sold were were defective. The fake ones? Oh, wow. So, you know, there are going to be a lot of people going to optometrists tomorrow and saying I'm blind, but uh, these seem to work okay, you know. They were they were really cheap, you know. But, um, but some some people make them, you know, with, uh, with uh, uh, the event on them and so on and make a big deal yeah. out of them so everybody can keep your glasses, you know. Um, Remember and, the day. Huh? What were you going to say? And remember the day. Yeah. And remember I'll never the day. forget the day. Yeah, that isn't on here. It just says medical king. I mean, I don't know what you would use these for other than eclipse, would you? Well, unless you want to take up welding or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can't do these things with them on. If you have them, you can't, you can't see anything out of them. You know? Yeah. Um, and then finally you get it and it sees the sun and you go, oh, there it is. Okay. But it's the only thing that comes through, nothing else. So how's everything up in Nicasio, John Ewing? Uh, everything's going well. The traffic's becoming a little Los Angeles. Um, mm. But it's still beautiful over here. We've been having really good weather. And uh, in fact, Nicasio, do you remember the Rancho Nicasio? Yes. I, 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 I used to... It's a restaurant out there. It was. Yeah. Is but they still? have barbecue on the lawns in summer. And so musicians go out there and it's a short drive from our house. So it's fun to go out there starting in about two weeks. I used to, in the old days, I used to take girlfriends out to Rancho Nicasio for dinner. Absolutely. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. And it's perfect. And so you go and you have a meal. And then if, if she, you know, isn't amiable, then you just leave her there. Yeah. <laughs> because really, if you didn't have a car, you wouldn't be able to get out of it. You wouldn't, it's a, what, 
10 mile walk to the closest town. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah. Wow. It was, but it was a great little restaurant and they had good food and, you know, it was a great, you know, and then when I take somebody out there, they'd be amazed. Oh, there's something out here in the middle of nowhere with, with yeah. a great restaurant, you know. That's right. There's a there's a red schoolhouse. Is it still there? Yeah, it is. And it's that square. It's a, you know, uh, the guy that runs the place is Bob Brown, and he did uh, Journey and Huey Lewis. He managed all those 80s bands. So mm -hmm. he's a real nice gentleman that brings in all type of different talent, different musicians, you know, so yeah. it's not just cowboy. The Red Schoolhouse is still there. Yes, it is. So it was a one-room schoolhouse mm -hmm. out in that area. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's being used as a schoolhouse anymore, is it? No, it, it might be a historical landmark thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then driving back, you drive along a road called Lucas Valley Road. That's right. And that's where Mr. Lucas uh, Skywalker Ranch is. Yep. Oh. Yep. 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 Um, which I've been to on several occasions. It's an amazing, amazing place. I don't know if he owns it anymore, though. Did he sell it? Was selling Lucasfilm or? I'm not sure. He bought a 5,000 acres next to it. Um, he still has the uh, recording probably where you went, where the stage and the musicians create the background music and Foley stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, well, they, have, they have a Skywalker sound. Right. Everything on this property is made to look like, supposedly he, he built a story about a sailor who came home from the sea and then built this big Victorian house and then decided to build a, uh, uh, a, a what do you call it, a, a vineyard. And mm -hmm. so there's a whole story of all the things on this ranch. It's, it's None of it's true, you know. <laughs> the Victorian is this huge Victorian that he built. Mm -hmm. And the Skywalker Sound is in the vineyard. He built a vineyard. And there are actual grapes growing around it and this big building that looks like a barn. And you go inside and it's the most sophisticated recording studio in America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, uh, then he's also got a, uh, a place where he stores all the props and everything, his archives. Yeah. And that's in a stable. He built a stable and then it's around this phony lake. That's I mean, right. It's really an amazing place he built for. He built his own little Disney World, you know. And, yeah. And it, it's an amazing, amazing place. And he has his own fire department. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Um, which uh, he also, as a goodwill gesture towards the community, in which he resides with Skywalker Ranch, has a uh, uh, has the fire department, and if there's a fire in the general area that isn't on Skywalker Ranch, they go out and you know help put it out. So he's been a real good neighbor in that area. And at one yeah. point, they were trying to get rid of him, they were giving him a bad time about that. They wouldn't let him expand. So you he know, bought Luke, another five thousand acres and said, "Fuck you," you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lucas Valley Road now is paved like Beverly Hills too. There's no more ruts in the road since oh, he got out there. You know, it's like velvet. Well, what's your... weird? What's weird is that he built Lucas Valley Road, and he didn't buy, buy this property off of Lucas Valley Road because it's his namesake. It has nothing to do with him. It always was Luke. It was they had Lucas Valley milk when oh, I was a kid. That's right. Right. You yeah. know, before there was ever a, 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 a you know, a George Lucas. And uh, it was terrific. It was just terrific. Well, I'm, I am I think we're going to bring this to an end so I can uh, wind up going into the other room and see if I still have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that was about, you know. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know. Uh, it's always good talking to you people. I love this time we have together. And uh, uh, we'll do it again next week. I do it come hell or high water. I didn't care whether there was an eclipse today or not. <laughs> we don't have Paula today because she was out looking at the eclipse. And then they were having an eclipse party at her condo. So. I was wondering about Paula. Yeah, I figured she's yeah. doing because it, it was right they, in her path. Uh, yeah, she, she wrote us. You know, she's one of those people who writes me. Francine writes me when she can't make it, you know, it's very nice. It's, it's just a nice group of people. 
and I enjoy the hell out of this. But thank you so much, Charlene, for being with us today. I appreciate it. Of course, Scott Boddicker, always nice when I see your lovely face out there in Plano, Texas. No, not <laughs> plain old Texas, Plano, <laughs> Texas. And uh, thank you to Francine Witt here in New York for being with us. Thank you, Marjorie, for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to find out what that was all about. Uh, Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Always do. Don, John Ewing, great. Nice addition. Uh, Len, good seeing you. Edward, oh, not yet. No. <laughs> uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you for being with us. Vernon, down there in Kentucky, thank you for joining us today. And, of course, the lovely and attractive Mandy O'Brien out there in Atlanta, Georgia. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye as Edward Berger signs us off by saying. That's all, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye, Alex. Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs>